Welcome to another edition of Talking Points, powered by Bodog. I am Stu Stone, and I am joined by everybody's best baseball friend, the man from the dugout, former Blue Jays manager, and all-time great baseball personality, my buddy and yours, John Gibbons. How are you, Gibby, this week? I understand you went bear hunting this week. <laughs> hey, see, the, hey, the things you learn in Canada. That's it. I would never thought I'd do that before. Yeah, my wife and I, we went out to Yellowstone and then the Tetons. And, and uh, she's a big, she loves photography, right? So I went out there and I carried her cameras and she went around. And we, she had a couple of those workshops. And we saw... We got to photograph some, you know, grizzlies, some black bears, you, you name it. We said big, big uh, buffalo or uh, bison, whatever you want to call them, elk. It was the most incredible ex experience I've ever had in a, a wonderful vacation. Got some great pictures. We saw this one famous bear. They, they, call, they call her 399. She's old. She's 25, grizzly mother, but which is unusual. They have like four cubs. I mean, she, I mean, that's, that's rare. And she was about to turn them loose. And we saw them, everybody, the, everybody's going to, uh, down there to the Tetons to see it if they possibly can before before the, she you know se separates, and so we ran into him on the side of the road. We were 25, 30 yards from. It's the most incredible thing you ever seen. Wow. Well, I tell you what, the, we're we're in a van, you know, so we're protected. Kind of, she's shooting out the, you know, so we're protected. You get you get these people all up and down. You get some of these older people, man, big old heavy set people with their cameras, and they they were even closer. Than we were those bears turn on them. I mean, that's some easy that's some easy points right there. Yeah. Was it, <laughs> was, it was, was it frightening being near like a five hundred pound animal? Yeah. Oh yeah. It, well, you know, it, I tell you what, your adrenaline starts you know pumping, but you know we're we're in the van, so that he wasn't going to get us. I was just thinking about those other bozos out there, you know. That's something I would have done, if you know, if the if the guide had let me. So what's scarier, going and photographing a bear from like twenty feet, or being in the batter's box against Randy Johnson? Well, since I never got in the batter's box against Randy, well, remember John Cruck in the All Star game? I know it was a little hand up. The ball went over his head. He he went down there. He was like, uh, "Hey, hey, yeah." Yeah, hey, Randy's got nothing on them grizzlies, I'll tell you that. You're probably right. Uh, let's get into some talking points. Uh, the first talking point, I mean, since we last saw you, I mean, at the time of this recording, the Blue Jays are losing a lot more than they're winning this month. Uh, it's, the, it's the dog days of May, I guess. And you've been there before where, you know, April, May, slow start for some players. We were asking last time for how does Bo Bouchette turn the season around? Seems like Bo found his bat at the same time everybody else forgot how to swing theirs. What are you what are you noticing here? What's uh, should Blue Jays fans be worried or is this just part of the is this just part of the, the journey? Yeah, Stu, you know what? Yeah, there's no need to worry. You know, they got off to a really good start. You know, they, one thing about baseball, you know, you go through a whole lineup, they, they're gonna go through some ups and downs. It's very rare that everybody's clicking at the same time for any length of time. That's just part of it, you know. The, you know, the better teams, they have they have more firepower, so they stay out of those valleys, you know, the, the shorter period of times. And sometimes their big boys come through for them, you know. And, uh, you know, that's what that's why it takes veteran veteran guys on the team, guys like Springer, you know, that uh, they've been there before. You'll help get these guys through because they're too talented, right? Now, they've lost some tough games. Yeah, I guess he went down into Cleveland, and, you know, nobody really knows how good Cleveland is right now. And they, they, I think they lost two out of three, wasn't it? And then, uh, two, of course, yeah, they, yeah, three out of four, three out of four. Okay. And so then they go to the, the Yankees the other night and they, they cough up that lead. Yeah. You know, that, that's the key. That's, that's the thing you got to guard against. You know, you get that, you get some young closers and you get some young, young guys on the team. When you cough up a couple of games late like that, it's how are you going to react? I think you and I talked about that, you know, a couple of shows ago. I think about the mentality of a closer and he'll be fine, you know, Jordan will be fine. And then, uh, but that's part, that's part of it. Nobody, you know, everybody loses 60, everybody. Right. That's what I'm saying. The best yeah. team in the league, the number one league team in the entire league is going to lose at least 60 games. So exactly. you got to get you some know, of them. The Yankees, on. And the Yanks are, the Yanks are doing it. I mean, everything's going their way. You know, I did make the comment that a couple people after that trade was made, that I thought in Donaldson, I mean, he hasn't kicked any gear yet, but I thought it was a great move for the Yankees because he, he brings some toughness to that team. You know, they were kind of a, Bunch of pretty boys, not the old Yankees with the Paul O'Neills and those kind of guys, right? And I thought that, you know, I think that's a great move just for that because Josh will stir some things up. He'll ruffle some feathers, 
It's not the you know the pretty boy Yankee, you know, wear their uniform. Even crazy. though, even though he does have the haircut and the clean shave now. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. I mean, there's certain things you got you got you got to stick to if you want you want to pay you that thirty million bucks a year, whatever he's making, right? You got to so you got to sacrifice a little. But I'm just thinking about his attitude. Yeah. And, uh, and I have no idea if it's rubbing off. I would think it, it would, you know, because he he uh, he and Russell Martin brought that to us, some toughness that we did not have. And we had Batista and Carnassi and some great players. But we needed that little bit of an edge, and they both brought that. And I think he's done that over there, even though he's not playing up to his standard just yet. Well, now, what about hitting with runners in scoring position? This seems to be a problem right now for the Blue Jays. And it seems to be like a winning formula for any team that's going to win games. You got to pass the baton, as they say. You got to string a couple hits in a row. Uh, you know, when you were managing the Jays, there was tough times when you guys had those situations, I'm sure, where you guys just had runners on second, third, no outs, didn't score anybody. How, how, how do you convince people to get out of that funk? Or what is it that's happening up there that's causing them not to, to knock these runs in? Well, well, number one, one thing is, you know, when the guys score position, you put it. It's a natural tendency, I think, to put a little extra pressure on yourself, especially when the team's struggling, right? And you're not coming through because everybody said the the, the it, just what you said. Anytime a team loses a game, where do they go? They automatically the first thing they go to is well, they they were one for whatever with guys in the score position. Yeah, that's you. That's what that's the bottom line in winning games, right? So everybody's aware of that. Now they try a little bit do a little more pressure, you know, on on yourself to get it done. Okay. And another thing is. You know what? What are what is the blue? Jay, what are the Blue Jays known for? Home runs, right? You know that's that's kind of who they are, and that's that's a lot of major league teams now. You know, and that's a lot of teams in that division, which you know I was a big part of watching it. You know, that's kind of how teams were built. So if you go up there and you swing for the fences, which a lot of them do every at bat, you know what? That's that's you're you're, you're not going to get a lot of cheap hits or knock little little singles here and there to drive in those runs. Your best hitters will take a little cheap single the other way to drive in a run instead of trying to hit. Right, but is know, there a difference in, a, in approach there? So, like, if you're facing oh, a, yeah. a fastball pitcher, like, there's a different approach? Like, aren't you trying to hit a home run every time anyway, or that's not the case? No, no. You, you know what? The, you know, if you listen, I, the, the, the great hitters I've ever heard speak, they, they say, you got to become a good hitter first before you have any home runs, right? You know, that's just, that's just if you, anybody can go up there and swing – swing as hard as they can try to hit a home run you know you're going to run into a few of them every now and then right yeah but you need you need you know you're gonna you're gonna have a couple of guys in your lineup that's strictly what they do that's kind of what they you know they hit their 30 40 year and the other numbers are down strikeouts are up but you got to have somebody that's some pure hitters on the team you know they get on base and move runners and do all those kind of things right and then yeah. you know you look at josh donaldson you know you know josh is one of my favorite guys and you know he's a yankee now which i dislike but he's Josh would go up there, and you, you, if you watch him, is some game, some some at bats, he's turning it loose, right? And he's trying to let let it fly. And he plays a lot of situations, baseball situations. And then you go up there and you watch him, and he'll try to just punch something through the other side, you know, not punch it. I mean, hit with authority. But that's what the great ones do. You know, you got to that, – that's why, you know, the great players in the game, they hit close to 300. They have – you know, they hit a lot of homers, and they drive in runs, right? Because they're good all-around hitters. Yeah, but the game's gotten away from that. The game loves the home run. They don't care about the strikeouts, that kind of thing. Yeah, it's and a different. That hurts different those teams. And when you think yeah. of when you think of who are the greatest hitters of the modern time of you know from the eighties on, you know you think of guys like Tony Gwynn or Ichiro. These guys never hit home runs. It's like no, although they could have hit more if they wanted. Sure, sure, that's if what I'm saying. Right? Out, if they're playing in this day and age. And went up there with that was the mentality. It, does, it doesn't mean everybody nowadays. That's all they're trying to do. Home runs. We don't want to. We don't want to confuse people. But that's what's getting them paid, and that's kind of the yeah what excites the game. So there's they, they do it more often than they probably should have. But you, you I, I don't know if it was on our show that we, you and I talked about each row. If you watch him take batting practice, speaking of each row, you would not believe how far this little guy could hit a ball. I mean, farther than most guys. But he just wanted. He I think he was chasing Pete Rose's record. He wanted to be the world all time hit king, right? And uh, he was just he just punched it out there, and it drove some guys on his team crazy. I remember listening to some some of them talk, but that was his game, and you know that what he did very well for. Maybe yeah. yeah, maybe Pete Rose bet against him and cashed in. <laughs> ah, uh, <laughs> did he win or lose? <laughs> yeah. Um. But 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 like from your mindset as a manager, your team is struggling 
four or five games in a row, leaving base runners on. Is there sort of like a rally call? Is there a different approach? Do you, do you talk to your hitting coach and work on something in yeah. the cage? Is there some kind of, what is the thing that you try to do to turn it around? Well, yeah, you, you obviously, you definitely talk to your hitting coach. Say, hey, listen, you know, and, and the hitting coaches, they know, they, they know what's getting, what's going on. And you tell, you tell some of your players, hey, there's nothing wrong with a cheap single here, you know, you know, there's nothing wrong. That's that's going to score runs. It runs win win game. You know, it's a big argument. You know, the because you, you weren't know, you weren't like a small ball manager. You were a home run guy. So yeah, I mean that's that's what our team was. But you know, yeah. if you go to the, back to the playoffs, you know, you look back one game that jumps at him in mind particularly in sixteen against Cleveland, right? You know, we we lost those first two games. We I mean there was low scoring games. You know, uh, Kluber and whoever pissed against us, they shut us down pretty good. We shut them down, but they scored a couple of runs. You know, but good pitching is going to equalize good hitting, right? So you, you, you're going to have to score other ways in the long ball. Those guys don't give up as many. And then I can remember we, we were down there towards the end. And remember the lefty that came in and was starting the game? He'd been up and down, triple A in the big leagues. I can't remember his name, but in, in Batista says, he's going to be shaking his boots, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he came in. He's and like, he's talking right knows. to us because all he went up there to change ups and yeah. way. And, and we're sitting there trying to yank him, hit him around the ballpark. And, you know, it, 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 he, he took advantage of us, right? So that, that's my point. And also in the modern game that we're seeing today, you know, a pitcher who's throwing in the high 90s, their breaking ball is like 91. <laughs> so it's like, how do you really sit on a breaking ball when it's really like a fastball? Yeah, you know what? You know, it's through the good hitters. They sit on something. You, know, you can't sit. You can't cover everything. You know, you'll get some guys will tell you that. That's a, I think that's such crap, you know? You, yeah. You're not going to hit it all, especially like you said, when they're throwing that hard, right? You better narrow in. You better sit fastball or maybe some guys sit location or maybe some guys become – really good breaking up ball hitters. And if they know the pitchers, but throws a lot of them, uh, you know what, you know what else happens? You, you, you can bank on this. When, when uh, runners get into scoring position, pitchers, they love to go to their soft stuff for whatever reason, you know, because they're going to try to get in that trick mode or get a little bit. If you watch, so some guys go up there sitting, you know, looking for that heater all the time, but when they're not, they're not going to get it. You know, we, and so guys abuse them with the off speed stuff. So sometimes you have to you have to flip your mentality, say, because you know I was a catcher, so I knew what these guys want to do, and I and I just witnessed it. Not all of them, but they love to go to the off speed breaking pitches when guys get into scoring position because it's 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 playing off of hitters' aggressiveness too, right? You right. Know? And so they they do that. And they try to trick them, and plus they're a little bit. They know they're in trouble, so they're going to go, you know, and most guys aren't good breaking ball hitters, right? And when you say, when you say, like, looking for a location, is there, you know, for people who are not major league hitters, who just watch the game like I do, are you telling me that a hitter could just go up and just, like, just swing in an area when a guy pitches and maybe get lucky and hit it? No, no, no. The, you know, especially nowadays where they have all the video and the analytics, and yeah. they track. you know, uh, if you're sitting, like, location – you know this guy likes to throw his fastball away, let's say, primarily. Sure. In these counts, he goes away with that heater, right? On this count, he runs it in. It doesn't always happen, but the percentages say that's when you – so so that, that you want that hit. The hitter is going to go in this count or wherever. He's just going to go and look for that inside fastball. He's going to give him everything away, but he knows he's – or maybe something that, that he's, he's done to him in the past and the pitchers had success with. So he's, he's sitting now. He's laying in the weeds for, you know – that's what he, so, or he may say, you know what, I'm going to give him this inside part of the play. I'm just going to sit outside on this guy and anything he throws in here, I'm going to take it. And then, uh, you know, if he, but if it's way now I'm covered, I'm looking out there. So I got a better chance of hitting it. It's almost like knowing what's coming, but you really don't, but you're, you're anticipating that because, you know, if you can't cover inside, outside, up and down, and, you know, which, which, you know, it's kind of makes it what's interesting too, with the, the way the pitchers, they all start throwing that four seam fastball now. They, if, they, they, if they if they can grip the ball, yes. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, there you go. I don't know, yeah, so this new stick or something they might have influenced it the other way now. But you watch, guys get two strikes on, on a hitter, they automatically elevate that fastball. Yeah. And hitters, hitters know it's coming, right? Because that's all most of And it's still tough to catch up with that thing, you know? So that, that hitting hitting's tough, but in it, in it, in it uh, that's why the greatest, you know, used to be when, when batting average, man, you know, 300 hitters. Yeah. You're still failing all the time. I've, I've, you've told me that before. I've heard you oh. say it. <laughs> well, one thing is that hitting is contagious too. And when you see, you know, guys can string some hits together, 
all of a sudden everybody can start hitting and that might have to do with like a pitcher losing you know it's a mental game a lot of it is a mental oh, yeah. game the batter's having an inner dialogue at the bu- in the in, in the box the pitchers who knows what they're thinking the catchers trying to figure out what they're doing there's so much thinking going on yeah and you know us as humans you know confidence is everything right we yeah. are i don't care what is it we're feeling good about something it's like when you make you make a movie or something or you do is you know, what? you know, this is, this is your great movie. You got it. Everything's flowing. Okay, you're feeling good. You know, if there's something you might, well, do I want this? And, you know, I don't know how how you make movies, but I'm guessing there's maybe, well, maybe we should do this and that. You know, so it's kind of similar. You know, sometimes, man, this is it. We're going boom, boom full speed yeah. ahead. And then, but you know, that 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 confidence can wane just a little bit, and that's all it takes to struggle. Well, you did. Sounds like you're not worried, but like maybe because uh, I know yeah, I hunt bears, man. I ain't worried. I hunt bears. That's right. Uh, historically speaking, I know that you have managed some superstars that had come had had slow starts. You know, I think of Russell Martin had a really slow start one season. You stuck with it. He came out of it eventually. I know Jose Batista even had like a really slow start, and then once he started going, he started going. But Matt Chapman uh, is the new sort of poster boy for slow start now that Bo is sort of snapped out of it Matt Chapman as of this recording batting in the hun- high hundreds uh you know there's a big signing or a big trade I should say in the offseason people thought he could be the second coming of Donaldson we know he's got the platinum defense uh we know he can hit home runs he's never been a big average hitter but you know having him in the sixth spot batting up you know below the Mendoza line that's not ideal. What, what's going on there? Is that just adjusting to a new division? Is that just wait it you out? What, what do we do here? Well, Stu, that's another thing. You know, it, it doesn't always happen, but it happens probably more than it doesn't. When guys get traded to a new team or they, they sign a big free agent deal, right? He, he got traded, but then he signed a nice two-year extension, I think. Yeah. Okay, so there's a lot of money in, in – uh, you know, some now the other he's maybe I'm sure like everybody else, he's feeling a little bit. He wants to justify it. He he wants to thrill his hometown country, not not city, home country. You know, so a, a little added extra pressure, like we talked about. I mean, it 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 eats it, guys. You know, and it, and it, they're not they don't do things as naturally. And a lot of times, you too, you'll see guys might the first year of a trade or free agency, they might struggle a little bit or something. Set it's set. And then they come back and bounce back and they're, they're their normal guy because now they're more settled in. Right. So that, that's not uncommon. You know, if he had never had good years in the past, you might worry a little right. bit. And, you know? I, and I think, and I think of Francisco Lindor a little bit, even though Matt Chapman's obviously right. not, Perfect. even Perfect. though Matt Chapman is not Francesco, uh, Francesco uh, you know what I'm saying? Right. But, right. you know, he was brutal last year and he's still a superstar. Uh, you know, so you're saying wait it out, Matt Chapman, don't worry. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know how he's going to all of a sudden drop off the map and, and become less than average Joe, you know, from what he's done in the past. I guess it could happen, but I wouldn't. You know, the thing, too, which we t- you talk about he's hitting sick or, I'm a, or, you know, guys hitting in the lineup, hitting home runs or hitting with guys in scoring position. It used to be you put that, you know, you always had your four or five hitters where your sluggers right in the lineup. That six, that six hole guy was that guy that was a pure hitter, a good hitter. Yeah, it was great if he had some power and some things like that. But he, because if those big donkeys in the middle, they, they struck out a lot, they, they leave that guy out there and there's two outs. You want that guy that come yeah, to the two base, they, they can sure. move the baseball a little bit. And you know what? He might get it done instead of like three guys going up there, just whiff, 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 you know? So that's, that is it. Although it's not the top of the lineup. It's very, very important spot in that lineup. At least it used to be. All right. Let's move on to one more guy that we've seen some incredible frustration. Vladimir Guerrero Jr., specifically in the Yankees uh, series that we just saw earlier uh, in the week. He's smashing his bat, breaking it over his knee. This is a new Bo Jackson kind of Vlad that we haven't seen before, where he were actually, the smiles are are still there, but now they're turning into like breaking a bat over his leg. So what's going on with Vlad in your opinion? Well, I, you know what, I... I didn't know he was that emotional. I thought he was that happy-go-lucky guy, like yeah. you said, all, all the time. But you know what? He's, he's human. You know what? He's he's probably the in the top five hitters in the game that the teams are aware of. And you know what? They're gonna they're not they're gonna make sure he doesn't beat you. They're gonna pitch around him. They're gonna. They seem to be just going away, 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 away on him. Yeah. He just he's yeah. just like swinging at it. Yeah. So you know what? But he's he's not he's not a what he's done the last couple of years. He's not a fluke. No. 
but he, and he's so young, he's still going to have to make adjustments. But what happens to if, if teams are smart, you know, you always pick one or two guys in a posing lineup, their best hitter, or maybe this guy's hotter and fire. You say, well, we can't let this guy beat us. You know, well, it may, if the guy behind him beats us, so be it. But this guy, we're stupid if we pitch to him like we, whatever. And so what happens though, if that guy, if you, if you, you really go up there, you got, you got to throw him something, right? You can't, I guess you get an intensity walk, but if you're not, if you, if you see if he's going to offer it some crappy pitch, if not, you walk him so big, no, that's, that's part of the plan. But now if he goes up there and chases that stuff because he's overly aggressive, because he wants to be the guy. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's what I think it that's is. That's probably what happens. That's what you I know, think the team a little bit. He wants to be I'm the, the hero. I'm the big dog. I got to get it done. Yeah. I, but if I go at it, but if I go out of my, uh, the zone that I am or the guy that I am, I'm not going to be as yeah. good. I'm not going to help him. That's probably I, I, what happens. I also think there's also like add in the comp, add in the, to the equation, Yankee Stadium and the Yankee Stadium fans were on him. And well, you know, but remember the series before he had like three home runs off, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, in that one game, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, in the, so, in the cathedral. Uh, <laughs> did, you that, did you see that? Uh, I read something. Uh, Chris Woodward, one of our old Blue Jays, managing the Rangers, they were up there playing it before the Blue Jays. And uh, uh, Torres, I guess, walked him off with a right field home run at short right field, and he was complaining about like a little league home run and all that. <laughs> And then, then, then that's what then happened to the Jays twice. They got beat by two 314 foot home runs. Right. Exa exactly. But, you know, I'm sure they've hit a few of their own there. Though. I'm sure. <laughs> that's I'm what, sure. That's what, but when you start criticizing Yankee Stadium, like what he did, but then he came back and said, it's the cathedral. You're right. <laughs> um, but, hey, hey, let's do hey, one more thing real quick. And I'll yeah. let you roll. You know, we talk about a cheap single to right field, right? Or something to, to drive in a runner, runner second base. When you play in Yankee Stadium, if you're a good hitter and you, you you know how to use that other side of the field, you can get some cheap home runs there. So there's you know no use trying to yank it all the time to that big left field, right? That's I, why it comes good hitters, not just sluggers. Aren't your the guys that always win it for you? You got to have some good you know all around hitters. Uh, I I mean I completely agree with you, but I also think uh, you know if the Blue Jays are trying to correct their losing, you know get off this off the snide or whatever you want to call it, they're going into Tampa now. As of this recording, they're playing oh, yeah, of in the trop. That's not, that's like a, things could go from bad to worse before they get better. Just because the Blue Jays like historically lose games in Tampa. Oh yeah, we did. But hey, welcome to big league baseball, man. You know, hey, and you know what? Expect, when the expectations are high, that's part of it, man. You get scrutinized. You, get, you know, when, you know, the last couple of years when they said, well, we hope they play good. Everybody just came out. They just go to the ups and down. Now, now they're, you know, picked to go to the World Series by some guys. You know, yeah. now you get a little more scrutiny. You know what? Now yeah. that, that now there's a little more heat on you. It's tougher to play. It, you know what? It's, it's, Stewie, it is tougher to play when, when you got to win than when you, you know, when you don't, when you're just kind of, well, okay, we're rebuilding all that. Now that you got to win, it gets tough to win when you absolutely have to. That's why the teams, when you go down the stretch in September, and they're muscling games. What you well, if you'd won a couple more back in April or May, you might not have to do that. But the heat's on, and when you when the heat's on you, and especially in the sport that's uh, more of a skill level, it gets that much tougher to play. You know, and that's yeah. you know that's and what losing sports do to you too. And in this, and in the irony of sports, uh, I don't know. By the time people watch this or hear this, it might be already passed. But Toronto playing Tampa in baseball. Toronto playing Tampa in the NHL playoffs. Oh, oh, what's, what's, what's it? Is it two, two, or three? It's three, two Leafs as of this recording. So by the Ooh. time, so by the time people hear this, the Leafs may have gotten out of the first round for the first time in twenty years and pulled off a Gibby miracle of their own. Uh, we'll see. Has it been that long since the first round? Twenty years. Yeah, wow. yeah. Okay, well, Tampa's good too, aren't they? They're the two back-to-back -back champs. Oh, did they win the last year? Oh, yes. yeah. Yes. Where's, the, where's, where's, the, where's the next game at? It's in Tampa. Okay. And it's, it's in Tampa. The, the day we're recording this, it's in Tampa. Again, this is probably already passed, but let's just pretend. Make a prediction. Leafs in six, Leafs in seven, or or uh, Tampa in seven. No, Leafs win it. Well, the Leafs may win it. Leaf, I tell you what, the Leafs win this series right here and get that monkey off their back, which they're – you you can go. You can say you know they're dudes. They're all there, but but they're good. They get that. They may win it all, right? Yeah, I agree. Because now they, they get that off. Everybody exhales a little bit. Now, well, let's go, boys. We got. Yeah. You know what? 
That's the toughest one. That's the toughest one. They may win all. They're gonna they'll win. They're, they're gonna they're gonna close it out. Why right, would well, they? hopefully we'll find they're, out if you're right. <laughs> I, I hope so. Tough, tough Canadians, man. Hey, Toronto deserve Toronto fans deserve it. I agree. Amen. So hopefully by the time uh, people hear this, it's already happened. Go Leafs, go. Is that a Leaf jersey you got on or is that a No, we'll, I'll show you what it is shortly. <laughs> when we get oh. Let's reveal our contest winner here before we wrap things up. Uh, last week's contest, we had you uh, ask Gibby a question. Our winner was Nick at Nick Nick NY, who sent the question for you, Gibby. One playoff game. Which of the Jays starters are you are you choosing to start the game if you didn't have to factor in rest? Well, when I look back, you know what, gosh, that, that it's like you got. I I would imagine just to help you out here, I, it's like a Gaus, Kevin Gosman, or it's a. a oh, 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 I thought you were talking about when I was there. No, no, he was talking about current, right current. Now? Yeah, so it's like Gausman or or it's or it's. Maybe it's Alec Manoa, or maybe it's Barrios, or it's probably not Ryu. I don't know. What do you think? I tell you what, uh, you know, Manoa is a young kid, but I, you know, I saw Stroman as a young kid, right? You know, doing some. You love handing the ball to the young kid in the high pressure situation. You know, what? I, you know, it doesn't matter to me how long. If if I think you're good, and if I think yeah. you got the, the insides, I mean, because really, there's a lot of good veteran pitchers. When games like that are, are you know crucial games, you see them wilt, right? I mean, yeah. it's just it's kind of what we were talking about earlier—the the mindset yeah. you know, that, that, that David I mean, David Price, fun. David Price, perfect example. Yeah, he always had trouble. In, you know, he went some games in, in in relief, but he had trouble. Yeah, you're right. You know, it, we, nobody can figure out why, but that's just the way it is. You know what? I might uh, tell me you're going with Noah. Tell me you're going with Noah. I, I think I think I think I would just because. How good he is and how dominating this guy is. Yeah. And, uh, uh, he just seems like a competitor, guy. like he's got that yeah. extra fire. In in uh in Gos Gosman, you know, I I've seen him and he's really, really good. I, I remember the old Gosman under the gun, you know, back in Baltimore days. Of course, he's obviously a different guy, you know, so that's probably unfair of me, but you know, it's not being seeing there, seeing everything all at once and, and following everybody. But just from little I've seen in Manoa and, and what I hear and read about it. Plus, you know, he's a big sucker on that, man. He looks like a bear, and I love yeah. him. Usually, you, you love it. Maybe That's you, know, with him. Maybe you a, and your wife, are, you and yeah. your wife are going to take pictures of him, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, Gibby's going Alec Manoa, which is, could right. be a surprise, but I like it. I like the call. Plus, well, um, you know what else? Still, I read an article on uh, when he was growing up and his brother and his mother raised him and their mother, you know, it's a recent article I read. I said, there's a guy, you know, when things are tough, when he, everybody's, when you need something out of somebody, what this guy's kid's been through and all, and how he's risen to the occasion and all that, that's your guy. Yeah. All right. I'm with you, man. Uh, and let's, plus, when you're that successful, when you get to the big leagues that quick, there's something special yeah, about it. You got to ride the hot hand, you know, yeah. especially if it's like a fresh hot hand that people don't have years of intel on either, right? Exactly. So it's like they don't know now, what, they, what he's going right. to do. Now, if you if you said who the guy that real quick that you know back from my day could, uh, in the when we got to the playoffs, I would have said Halliday obviously back then, but we were in the playoffs. I think it, uh, Marco Estrada. Yeah, he was great. Oh, in the big games in the, in the playoffs, what did he do? like I even mean, keeled. Yeah, worked, worked at his pace. Never the, really the adrenaline's flowing and the pressure's on and the whole world's watching. He's got that yeah. changeup, that unhittable changeup. So he plays off a of guy's aggressiveness, and that's why he wins. No, I agree. I think it was just beautiful. It was beautiful watching him pitch in the playoffs. He was just like a, on a, another level, like his composure. Yeah. His like he 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 worked the game at his pace. He he made them come to him. You know what I mean? Exactly. But uh, still, he made. He was like he was like this. You know, he couldn't rat, He didn't couldn't rattle him. Yeah, he was, he like, was unrattable. Are you breathing? Is your are you, is your heart elevated? Oh, no. Even though he used to like bring his glove up over his face before every pitch, and who the hell knows what was going on? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Like that. Um, yeah, all right. It's contest time. Uh, if you're watching this right now on the Bodog Twitter feed, we are having another contest. Uh, Gibby wants to answer your question. If you want to win the contest, all you have to do is reply to this tweet that you're seeing this on and reply with hashtag talking points. Give us a question that you want to ask John Gibbons and somebody is going to win a major league baseball Jersey of their choice. Gibby, what kind of questions are we looking for this week? Anything? Anything. Come on. You fire out. It can be good, bad. It could be embarrassing to me. It could be, you know, stupid. You go, 
Gibbons, how could you be so stupid back then or whatever, whatever. Or you, you see, or hey, Gibbons, you just confirmed you are an idiot. You don't know what you're talking about, just like we thought years ago. You could ask anything. <laughs> All right. Well, you heard it from Gibby. Ask anything. Reply in the comments. We're going to pick a winner. Your question will be answered on the next episode of Talking Points. Uh, good luck. And as for the jersey I'm wearing today, what? Ooh, what is this? Dominicana. Dominicana number from? 19. Who's that? Are you from the Dominican? No, but Jose Bautista is. <laughs> Oh, Jose, that's Jose 19. Was Jose 19? Yeah, he was 19. He's a Jose. Uh, hey, that was that the, he, he got a big walk off hit in the last, uh, w, uh, what was it, the Olympics, wasn't it? Yeah. Was that, was that his jersey? Was I wish he was still playing, but it's just, it's, never, it's not going to hey, happen. Jose was good for the game, you know? He yeah. could, could be a real pain in the ass to some people in, in the, in the, his peers out in the game hated him because he was so good and he wore it on his sleeve. But you know what? He was good to the game and he was a good freaking guy. And he would do anything for anybody. You know, he was a, he was a true gentleman. And, uh, you're right. The game needs more of those guys. I agree. And the game needs more. drive you crazy, man. <laughs> well, we'll, get, we'll get into some Jose Batista stories this summer, I'm sure. Uh, Gibby, have a great week. And uh, we will catch up again on the next edition of Talking Points. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to tune in every week for new episodes. Share this if you like it. Tell your friends. Gibby's here all season long. It's Talking Points, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks, John. Hey, unless I'm out hunting bear or something. <laughs> uh.